<laughs> uh, let's talk to James. James is calling in from New York. Um, and James wants to know if we consider ourselves hard atheists. Hi, James. Hi. Hi. Yeah, uh, one thing I, I, I wanted to know if you consider you, yourselves hard atheists, but also another kind of like little thing too, if you don't mind. Sure. Also something I, I explained to the call screen. Um, uh, if, if in this lifetime uh, you found proof, undeniable, unequivocal, factual proof that there is a God or there is gods or that, you know, she, he, them, they, whatever, um, and that they created you in the universe and that everything that has ever been said about them that's misogynistic or evil or kind of tricksy, as Smeagol might say, is totally 100% false. And after you die or when in the hereafter he just or she says or they say, you basically get to live in this paradise kingdom for as long as you would like. And we let bygones be bygones. How, how would you feel about that? Okay, so first, let me see if I get this right. First, you want to know if we consider, well, Stacey and I will answer probably on our own, <laughs> um, if we consider ourselves hard atheists. And then basically, if, mm -hmm. if it was proven completely with like evidence and all of the things that we would require that God was real and he wasn't a douche, is what you're saying. How would I feel about that? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I will answer like the bygones, like first bygones, one. Be bygones. Yeah. On to the first one. I don't, if we're talking about the like hard atheist scale, like the Dawkins scale, is that kind of what you're referencing? Um, right. I... I would not consider myself a hard atheist. Um, there are some concepts of, and we, this would really have to get into definitions of what we talk, we're talking about, but I basically, I personally wouldn't necessarily would make the claim that I believe that there is no God because I need to know what people mean by their definition of God. And so there are some concepts that I am open to listening about or that I just think are so inconsequential. I don't care to like, you know, take a position on it one way or another. Um, I mean, a lot of people bring up different concepts like panpsychism or um, panentheism. And these other ones, they, first of all, they don't make claims about a God who doesn't want women to speak and all these other harmful things that we talk about all the time. So I, that kind of answers your second question. Um, I don't really, I don't care that much if, <laughs> if that God were to exist, if it's inconsequential to my life, um, that's fine. I'm not offended by that. Um, so but with regards to the Abrahamic gods, I would consider myself a hard atheist. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on what the definition of God is. Like I believe that the Abrahamic God is not real. And I you know, take a harder position on that. So it really would come mm -hmm. down to the nuance of what we're talking about. So it's an individual conversation for each theist or, um, you know, panentheist that I'm talking to. Yeah. Uh, how do you yeah. feel about that, Stacey? Yeah, well, I was I was gonna say definitely the Abrahamic gods for sure. I would I'm a hard atheist. Um, oh, hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a hard atheist when it comes to to that, and I don't really have reason to believe that right now that there is any other god. And at this point, I don't care if there is. Um, I'm not out looking for there to be one. And I feel like at this far, like at this, this late in the game, not late in the game, but at this point in life, I feel like there would have been some kind of evidence shown for there to be some sort of God. Um, as far as would I worship it? I don't think so. If there was evidence for one, do I don't think I would need to. Um, I'm, I haven't worshipped a God in about two years now and I haven't been missing anything in my life. Um, in fact, my life has gotten better without the need to worship anything. And as far as going, if I died and let bygones be bygones, if I would want to continue, what was that part of your question? I'm sorry. I don't like, um, like that part of my question kind of went like, uh, and they and what if it was God, he, she, they, what have you? Yeah. They basically, uh, 
you know, bygone, let's let bygones be bygones. I'd like to have a relationship with you now and get to know you kind mm-hmm. of on a more uh, personal level. Why? Why after I die, though? So, no. I think I think yeah. in this life, God, want, that, that's my thing. For me, mm-hmm. as as an agnostic theist, I'm not I'm not looking for the knowing. I'm not looking for the no. I don't. I, have, mm-hmm. I wouldn't ask God to prove. I wouldn't never. I'd never test the faith and and put God to the test so much as to have to have him or her prove himself to the point of beyond the shadow of a doubt, because I don't know what it's going to take to get me there. So I would just rather be welcomed into their kingdom, and I would rather have a relationship with them now so that I can better be apt to know them then. Mm. My other thought about this is that even if, so if there was a God and they, you know, according to you, they are basically not the things that we assumed before they're good they're loving i would have a lot of questions even you know kind of in the position that you're in right now i i would still have a lot of questions about why why the pain and suffering of the world why did why why allow all these things so i mean the questions of like the um like the you know the problem of evil would be still really um like in the forefront of my mind i would so i mean i would feel hesitant to step into that same place that you are at right now where you are kind of um, looking for these the values of belief rather than you know these concrete evidential truths and but why how and why are you able to worship some something um, with these other questions like well, does it bother you that they don't show up mm-hmm. in the world or they don't help people or that there are children who die from cancer and like the other you know the the typical questions about the problem of evil and also why would yeah, they wait until you're bothered. yes yeah why, why would they wait until you're till you've died to reveal themselves and then kind of get you in that, like, that doesn't really make a lot of sense me? to me. Okay. That's yes. Yes. That's the thing. And I've wondered about both of those questions for a long time. And I think the best answers that I've come up to are with, the, with and two of these is that number one, perhaps the gods or she or he is not all powerful and they are merely seeking our forgiveness because of that fact. And, like, it's more of kind of a Candide Voltaire kind of thing where this is the best possible world that they could have put us in with the free will that we have, perhaps, if we do. And uh, as far as proving it till we get to heaven, I mean, maybe they can't because of whenever weaknesses and then the human suffering because of their limitations and weaknesses, they maybe can't get to everyone. Okay. But then why, so why worship that God? Do you still believe that I that God will send you to God. hell? I don't, I don't worship. He's my father. I don't worship him. I have a relationship with him. I simply love him. I care about him. I'd like to see him kick his feet up every now and again because he has to see every horrible atrocity that happens. He, he's powerless to stop it for the most part. I don't think we <laughs> so, give him more, more credit. I don't, I don't think we, we take into account his great responsibility. And it's more than just the fact that I love God. I love the idea of God. I love the ideal. Well, that idea and the ideal. Do you think that that's a good a good reason to like keep to claim the label of or like to have belief is just because you like the idea of it? I don't even. I'm more of like Rufus. I'm more of the disciple, the apostle Rufus from from Dogma. I don't have a belief because beliefs can't be changed. Beliefs can get people killed, but I do have a good idea. Ideas can be changed. I'm willing. Do you to care, okay. James? Ideas. Like, do you do you care about some? Do you care about truth? Of course I do. Yeah. So, but I also ha- care about those two things. Seem contradictory to me because if if you believe in truth, would you think it's best to withhold, you know, positions on things, or even to live your life as though you believe um, until you have some concrete evidence for something? Well, didn't the great poet within the great poet once say beauty is truth and truth is beauty? And if there is any beauty in any biblical or religious story whatsoever, doesn't that make it true by sentiment mm-hmm. alone? No. no. <laughs> no. I mean, those are two different things we're talking about. I'm t- I'm not talking about um, you know evidential 
true things in the world, things that comport with reality, those kind of things. I think if you're talking about nice stories and yeah, I mean, stories can have an impact on people. And I can say that this is my favorite story. This is my favorite book, but I'm not going to call myself a, you know, and, and um, identify with a, a reader of a certain book uh, because I mean, it's, those are two very, very different things to me. Um, if I am going to live my life in such a way that also affects how I am seeing other people or how I'm voting and all these other things, I'm going to have to have some pretty good evidence before I call myself that label. It kind of sounds like well, it's one, a, call, kind of a wishy-washy belief that you have. It sounds wishy-washy to me. I don't call myself by any label and uh, I don't, my beliefs or opinions or ideas don't necessarily affect how I vote. My, I, I, I'm a very liberal, or, or I shouldn't say that. I mean, my beliefs do affect how I vote. My ideas affect how I vote. My ideals affect how I vote. I don't look to any religious text that say, this is the morality that a God says I should have, and you must do such and so and this and so. That I do not do, because to thine own self, okay. I will Let's... always remain true. Okay. Well, I mean, that sounds great for you then. I'm happy that you have found a place where you don't think you are causing harm to other people. I honestly, kind of going back to the first part of the question, if you have a belief, but it's not necessarily hurting somebody else and it's not hurtful for, hurtful to yourself, um, I'm only going to push you so far into asking why you believe those things. I do think that it is better to believe true things um, mm -hmm. if you can help it and to not unnecessarily... Did I, know, I didn't adopt other things. So you're, you're saying, I know. You, I know you. You're saying. I, go ahead. You're saying I really didn't give you a concrete answer. You didn't. You don't feel as though I got. A, I gave you a concrete answer as to why I believe those things without evidence. Or you know what I mean? Because yeah. if, to give you a more that. concrete answer, I, to give you a more concrete answer. Listen, I can't. I can't point to any one scientific factor. I mean, I'm sure you, I mean, I know I've watched, I've been watching this show for 16 to 17 years and people try to point the scientific fact after scientific fact and, and they get shot down. So I can't point to any scientific fact and say, well, this is why God is true or God created the universe or God created you. I simply believe and have a level, a level of, of just a hair bit of faith and hope that God is true and that I'll live forever merely because it's the story that I've gleaned from the religions and spiritual practices that I've studied have a, a, a such a great degree of romantic and uh, nuances to them that I okay I yeah. I feel like you did you did say a bunch of more things there but I didn't really get that much of a different I you know because, that wasn't that believe, different from what you were explaining earlier I because it's romantic. I believe. Okay, so to believe something, hang on, just to believe something because it's romantic and that it's nice, is that a good method for living your life in the world? Because if you can just believe something because it sounds romantic, like I should let my dog drive my car because and drive me, you know, to work because I think that would be really cute. I don't think that that's a good way to go about my life. Like that's not a good method to get no, to you know, my good, decisions. It would make a good movie. It would make a good. It'd be in a, if you, yeah, it'd be. A, it would make a good something to put in a movie, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's, it'd yeah, be a great for an animated movie, maybe. But we're talking about the real world here. So when we're talking about how we go about and the method that we use to, you know, move about in our lives, like, do you not care about your methods? Do you not care if something is true or not true? Like, as I hear what you're saying. It's oh, it's a romantic yeah. thing. And honestly, I mentioned earlier that there are some ideas of God that don't bother me as much because some of them are more romantic, if you will. But I'm not going to live any part of my I life by that. it. But here's the thing. I don't think I have to. I don't think I have to continue. I don't even think I have to shove off any religious ideas or spiritual ideas that I have, just because they don't necessarily comport with every little truth of reality. They add a whole. I mean, I find that quite a cathartic practice when I'm just alone meditating on how much God loves me and what He's done for me. I automatically will start to fall in years, and I'm able to heal from the suffering that I've had to endure throughout my life, and I get one shred of peace back. I think that that's you should give yourself the credit for getting through those things. Why do you, don't you think, like, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to give yourself the credit? 
like for getting yeah, through those things? I, I, my, my, my father uh, does not like to get into it. My, my physical father on earth was a big part of that suffering. And I'd like, I'd like to know that I have, I'd like to at least not know, but at least believe that I've got this great big father in the sky that loves well, me and is looking out for me. So, I mean, well, that, just, that makes you're sense why you're a crutch in a way, right? Yeah. So that would be why the romantic idea of having someone well, you know, appeals to if, you. If you've got broken, if you, if you, yeah, of course. But if you've got broken legs, what's wrong with you using a crutch? You need a crutch when you get a broken leg. But your legs do you, heal eventually. You don't use a crutch forever. And what if your legs aren't broken? Oh, yeah. What if your legs work just fine and the broken leg was just the thing that you convinced yourself of? That's the point. Your legs aren't broken in this if, in the if that you've gotten that, through those if things. I'd let it go. If that was the case, I'd let it go. But the suffering that I've had to endure young ladies is like getting run through with more than one mortal blade. And those okay. wounds never heal. Well, I think I think we're at an impasse here, James. Like I I, I hear what you're saying and I, I, I hope you don't feel like we are just yeah. shutting it down. I do hear what no, you're saying. You you've got some you your you your faith gives you meaning and I get that. I really do. I don't think it's something that has come anywhere close to the point where Stacy and I would kind of want to follow you down that path. I mm -mm. don't think that it's good to mm -hmm. you know um, believe something or do you have faith in it or to uh, really give any of my time to something just because it's romantic or cute. Um, but I mean, I don't want you to have, um, I don't want you to go down a bad path in life. So if it's something that gives you meaning, then you do you. But I don't think that that's a really good reason for any of us to do it. Well, listen, I, I will do my best to keep, keep my mind open and as skeptical as I can. And if ever I choose to become an atheist, you'll be the first to know. And uh, I want to let you know I am an atheist ally. I'm very much an ally of yours. I, I, I appreciate it. I do. All right. Well, I appreciate you calling in, James. Um, I, you know, I'd yeah. love to hear from you again. I would love you to maybe call in and try your best to convince us of something. But I mean, for now, I just appreciate you calling in and we'll I talk will. to you again soon.